maybe an ogre or a yeah. Rubik. We've been seeing a lot of secret. pie ogre this tournament already. Pi likes to sacrifice what about, himself, uh, himself for a team. Is this the another space creator? Yeah, yeah. He's that guy. He's the martyr, I like to say. But, uh, you know, similar like we saw the debut match of Secret here yesterday, they're just going to show their hand right out of the yeah. path. They're going to pick up both their cores. They're, they're two big, big grabs, so you yeah. can't really fault them on that. It's like, let's just go for it since they're still out there. And it's, again, it feels like it is a deny pick. You know, you're making sure that Burning doesn't play his lifestealer. It's very true. You know, just by picking these straight up. So, you know, by no means something that the Secret's not strong with. You know, MP is going to be very good on lifestealer, and as we've seen before, mid one, very strong on the Ember Spirit. But uh, apparently they pick it this early because of the matchup that they have. I want to see Enigma not getting banned, so maybe <laughs> Secret will pick it this time. Yeah, yeah That's Enigma. That's true, actually. Every, was it pretty much every game yesterday against Secret was being banned now? Yeah, I think so. Every game? Every game it seemed like Secret were involved with, there was an Enigma ban. Yeah. No. No, normally the fourth ban, wasn't it? So we'll see if that, that does happen again here. Well, I, could definitely, I could definitely see that. I could see IG sleeping on the Enigma, and the next thing you know we have the uh, Kazoo. Enigma on our hands. I, I would love to see it. There's been a lot of talks about it by you, Lacoste, and yeah, I've even heard murmurs from the players and teams themselves talking a bit about the offlane uh, off Enigma. It's, it's I miss my black holes, man. I think it's everyone it. does. A black hole is not just uh, as good as it is. It's uh, more of uh, like fear effect. You, you need yeah. to be spread out in the team fights. I love spells that are like that in general, like Tidehunter, Enigma. There's the Wisp coming, ban coming out. Yeah, also getting rid of the, the Omni Knight here. We saw lots of Omni Knight play over the past couple of days, that new repel. You can't dispel it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a bit of a headache for a lot of teams. What about the Puppy Silencer? Lots of it yesterday. Do we see a home for it here in the lineup? We don't typically see Silencer great against the Knicks or even a Shadow Fiend, but if Secret are looking to go with the comfort they had, if not there, we, Puppy always has the... The puppy classics, if you will. Maybe Chet. he'll be stubborn and get it again. It's not bad, especially if you do well in the early game. Get some int up, then transition into like mid semi carry. Oh, RG. I'm just to see what they pick up here. I mean, already revealing what you know, you'd imagine to be their two cores. They, they could burn the Knicks in the, the sport, but more than likely, it will be XXS playing it on the offline. So, I mean, still left in the pool. Any any kind of strong strong heroes that kind of scream out to you? Any sort of? I mean, do you feel they need extra catch for the Ember Spirit, or is the Nyx Assassin enough? Do they need a little bit more control? Yeah, I'm surprised we're not seeing the Disruptor at really yeah, at all yeah. this tournament, yeah, especially in an era of Ember Spirit. I, I'm surprised Disruptor just really isn't kind of getting into the game. You know, it's great to have that control. Totally, that totally agree. That's one great hero to counter the Ember with, and. Uh, because he usually doesn't build a BKB, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not a BKB carrier. <laughs> but uh, I don't know IG to really go for a whole lot of Disruptor. I could see them just try to creep in the Rubik or yeah. something like that. Um, but we also know them to also play on that Minus Armor synergy quite a bit. And hey, well, Weaver Team helps a bit with the Minus Armor de department up. typically. Uh, but remember, Q, you can be crafty with the drafting. They can, this they is can do not, both positions. Yeah, this is not penciled in as a core weaver, they have that mind game factor. But yeah, but you have a burning remaining. in a team. So yeah, burning burning weaver is a thing too. Five seconds remaining. Certainly so. Back up towards the other way here, secret now. Got to Reserve start considering time. their support staff unless they do want to hop on something like that wanna, Enigma, let's say. They don't want to get uh, some too greedy supports if the game doesn't go well in the early game. Uh, IG has two invisible heroes that are going to need to spend a lot of money on uh, dust and sentries. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean I'm, you know, in the past, historically, Pilot Die has uh, given us some amazing lion performances, maybe even pulling it out now so you have that mm -hmm. bit of control. You know, he is going to be poor, but lion, he could do a lot without, without the items as long as he's got that instant hex to, to catch out the Nyx or the Weaver sneaking up on them. What about something like uh, the Bounty Hunter? We only got to see a, a little bit of it yesterday, I believe, in the hands of DC, but you get that free track, that, that way of kind of keeping a lock onto the Weaver and the Next Assassin, a way to build in some economy, but they're going to go with the Rubik, it Radiant looks like. Team pick. Strong mm -hmm. staple. Very nice to play against the Weaver, you know, almost guaranteeing to get that Shikuchi is, mm. is awesome on the, uh, if you're playing Rubik. Yeah, good, good spells to steal, and uh, having a 
magic resistance. A lot of magic remaining. damage coming out from Shadowfiend yeah. and Nyx Assassin. Yeah, even Fade Bolt's nice Five to have. You get the remaining. hard hitters like Shadowfiend and Weaver, so... He actually brings a little bit of everything to the table, and now you have that Reserve mild time. bit of initiation, that, that way to be a little bit of aggressive in the early game, too. No Ten vehicle, remaining. if you will, still here for the Lifestealer yet, so... There's still that thing as well for Team Secret. They yeah. don't have anything to stop the black Team hole Secrets with... Yeah, I guess... It gets a BKB. Only the Nyx, but it's not the, the easiest way to cancel it. Yeah. Dazzle comes out. More of that armor More manipulation. Armor, yeah. yeah, armor manipulation here. It's just a, it's an IG thing they like to go for. But we also saw Ten tremendous success with remaining. Dazzle in the hands of OG. So I can't really fault them on that one. Five seconds now, nice remaining. Defensive support to get. And then we go back the way of... I mean, Silencer's nice to have against the Dazzle. I don't know if it's something Secret will consider here. Nice, that's true. I think in a lot of the games where we saw Dazzle picked up the other day, Silencer was banned out because teams were so uh, kind of scared of having to, to, to play it against that global silence. Maybe, maybe Team Secret want to go Axe now because of the Dazzle and the Shallow Grave. That's oh, true, yes. Ooh, we good. saw Kez on the Axe. Didn't have the best of game, though. Yeah. Remember, you, oh, Hunter. as you mentioned. Radiant I mean, team nice back. one. Thanks, man. Yeah, Bounty Hunter. Now you have a way to kind of be able to keep track of, of course, all those frisky yeah, little invis heroes and, uh, and someone obviously to go through the lanes and create the pressure there. I'm watching at this axe, really. You can do nikes in him, just Ten good way to initiate. Yeah, get some could be easy really kills. Very nice with the, the bounce as well. You get kind of what, the track bonus movement speed. You're hitting the dunks. You're able to just kind of chase down and get kill after kill after kill if you find them. Yeah, the get the speed Turn from dunk band. from uh, yeah. track. And just just run at them. I really can see the axe, but I really want the enigma. That's yeah. how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I want I want enigma, but I can see the axe happening. Band of Darks here though comes out actually from IG, so I, I can see that as well. Iron Shell, Bounty Hunter, that, that's a pain in the ass right there. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Five seconds remaining. So final banner here from Secret. And you're looking over to IG's side and again, as we mentioned this. A weaver. Yeah, a little less like that versus. So they are Team looking Secrets for that second support, or still the burning core. They could still switch it around and have Weaver being played by Q roaming around with Dazzle. Spirit Breaker banned because of that bounty hunter. Yep. Mm hmm. So what is it for Kezu? Is it that axe? Is it that dream Ten pick enigma? Remaining. I don't know him to play like a, a centaur, really. He did, he did play the centaur. Oh, he did? Okay. Once. Remaining. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I want to say. No, oh, no. Give me anything like what? What's it going to be? Something flashy. Something fun. They don't have much time, 30 seconds left, but I guess they know just. But, uh, you know, then at that point, what, what stops IG from keeping that Weaver in a core position and picking up a silencer themselves, you know, as the last counter? I mean, I would hate to be Enigma going against a silencer. You're pretty much going to be forced in that BKB situation. It's pain, pain in the ass to play Enigma against uh, Ten Silencer. Seconds yeah, he's just going to stand behind, just wait for that. But That's where maybe something like the axe becomes a, a bit more fruitful. Five seconds. Or oh, there's the Underlord. I forgot about that. Er hero. Yeah, I, almost, I think almost everyone was probably <laughs> sleeping on the Underlord for that one. Probably not oh, Chat, because of course they know him better. But for us here, yeah, suddenly a wild Underlord shows himself. I don't think I've seen Kezu play this hero yet. An interesting final pick. I mean, they do Ten have ways to, to fight around the aura. You know, SF's going to be stacking up souls, so that's not going to be affected Five by the base damage uh, atrophy reduction. Uh, but definitely the team fight control is, is going to be huge. You know, the, the pit and just Five having a, a telekinesis remaining. or a chains, you're kind of perma-rooting heroes uh, in the it fights. Is, it is a position uh, for Weaver, actually. Yep. All nice right. prediction there. Last pick. last pick was that jug, gentlemen. Based on the draft here, what's it looking like? Is IG going to be staying alive as they move through that lower bracket, or will Secret be able to advance forward to take on Team Faceless? I'm afraid of this Underlord. I think they swapped the Weaver and the, the position four because of the Underlord pick, so that he, that, because of Pit of Malice, it works really well against Shukuchi. So you're liking Secret? I think I'll go with IG this game. Okay. OD? Okay. Okay. I, I think the Underlord final pick, it seems like something that I can imagine Secret having a bit of a smile that they managed to get it through, maybe feeling that it was a little forgotten, that drop by IG. So I, th I think Secret's going to be strong. All right. Well, let's get into it. I want to remind you guys, if you want to get a part of all the giveaways, of course, with the AMD processors, graphics cards, and Dota cosmetics, head over to G2A.com slash Dota Pit. Let's get into the Dota action now, and we'll throw it ringside to our casters. Take it away.
Thanks a lot, Dakota. It is great to be here. IG versus Team Secret. One best of one. And Fogged, Team Secret seem to have all the greatest heroes in the current game of Dota in their lineup. Plus a bounty hunter. Yeah, they've got an Ember first pick and they're dealing they're playing versus a single lockdown team. It's a lot on XXS to make the make the position just to be able to lock this Ember down. It's just Carapace and Impale. That is literally their only way to lock down this Ember Spirit. So I would favor uh, Secret's lineup also because they have this Ember Spirit Bounty Hunter to deal with like the mid lane. So Shadow Fiend is already a hero that's very squishy and he he's going to require a lot of help. So it's going to be Q having to help him a lot. So Underlord is going to have a, quite a free time in that off lane in my opinion. So yeah, yes. that's a dangerous kind of situation. Like yeah. I've seen under Lords uh, when they run the off lane, you have like an SK going up, up against them where it's a little bit more of like an even kind of trade uh, or at least some kind of damage that forces them off the lane. But if he has a free time, like what stops the team secret snowball around the 15, 15 minute mark? Yeah, and we're getting those track type of kills is going to be very big. I usually like to see Baboka playing more of like the, the very aggressive heroes with like the uh, initiation and disable, like we saw with his Earth Spirit, but he is playing the Weaver, nice aggressive hero as well to kind of match up for that one. So we'll probably see the double bug combo coming out for them in that top lane just to force the experience for the Nyx Assassin since he, his role is extremely important in this lineup, in this uh, game for IG. He is their only lockdown. Yep. 30 seconds. Only lockdown up against Nimbus Spirit. Yeah. At least he's uh, the best lockdown against Nimbus Spirit. Yep. With Very long stuns, easy setup with Carapace. Yep. And Emperor is overall a very pretty low armor hero too, so at least they have that going for them where they have a ton of minus armor plus vendetta to kind of deal with him with that massive physical damage burst. So they at least have that going for them versus the Ember. I'll oh, oh. say hello already. Burning Q. Q as well as burning moving up for the rune. KZ is nearby so this might not be the easiest thing in the world. In fact Q is taking a little bit more damage mid one. There's poison up now. Does KZ want to level anything? He's just watching him. He's got more support coming in from Puppy. So yeah, he's going to throw down the pit. Dazzle doesn't get stunned up his second time, but Puppy says hello, hits him hard to start with. Tries to body block. There's your second attack. Kezu, does he have enough? It will be. Puppy will spill the first blood after a very aggressive move looking for those runes. The pit does hurt you a bit in the laning phase because you don't have the atrophy aura, but getting the kill, 100% worth it to skill that. Nice rotation coming in from Puppy and from Kezu. Courier is walking out. Will Puppy be able to claim that one as well? The he's sentry's already down for, he's looking for the hero kills. Like, there's a sentry ward in mid lane, so he's very visible on this, but he's just trying to zone out OP. Yeah, this is very scary for the Shadow Fiend. He's able to get harassed very easily. And the Dazzle already shows that he's going to be just sitting in the mid lane, so I think that OP's going to suffer quite a lot here. Puppy didn't go back into the mid. And said, looks like he's having a wander down the bottom lane. Keizu was getting harassed up a little bit, but now he's about to hit his level two. Auras will kick up, and actually, no, Puppy, he's doing the wraparound. He's deciding where he wants to go. He knows that the sentry's in the mid lane too, so waiting for his next shadow, shadow walk, and now mid one pushes the wave in so they can cleanly, easily take out that sentry ward to no contestant. But looks like he's actually going for a courier snipe here. But there is no courier right now. No. Salvo's already delivered. They shut down the SF enough that OP's not getting anywhere near enough farm that he's even remotely considering picking up that bottle yet. Yeah, this is, I think this is OP's one of his most played heroes, this and the Tinker, so he's very comfortable on it, but playing versus a dual lane like this is quite difficult. And here we go, Sentry down, Puppy eats it, and that makes it extremely difficult for OP. Kezu not really being too bothered by this dual lane either. They do look like they're trying to go for some pressure with the poison touch top lane. Speak that wise, we look away. Baboka with the swarm to get some pressure on to the Dazzle. It's actually pretty much or onto the Rubik. It was kind of like a solo kill. XXS was just actually contesting the mid lane. Yeah, they just throw the lane position really, really well. Those raids, his mid one's hurting. He's got flame gun up in one second time. Has to ferry fire up. Now the flame gun. No, he's going to hold on to it. Is back oh. out. Force TP rotation. Poison touched the creep by accident from Q, but I don't think they would have been able to get the kill anyway on Puppy since he's completely out of mana. Yeah, that opening up on top lane looked like it was, it was created just because Pilot Eye did the pull through. Yeah. So, simple contest with, with Beatles. We saw Team Secret, in fact, utilize that with the Weaver yesterday. Puppy's maneuvering really hurt. All that wonderful negative armor. And now he's just harassing Q. Oh, oh. Mr. Level 2, but still hasn't leveled up his uh, second ability, just in case he needs Shallow Grave or not. I think this is what Q needs to do. He needs to be sitting around the mid lane, or he's just carrying the TP like we did see him doing Radiant's from the bottom lane. Courier does Thank actually you. get sniped. Okay. that's. I think they even they knew that he was kind of like rotating down there with the illusions that he had, so a little bit strange for them to actually lose it there, but Poppy already putting so much pressure on this mid lane. There is one bright side for IG. 
Uh, this is not it. Uh, Q is going to die to Puppy. Puppy needs one more attack. As you go invis in time, he's out of range of the Sentry Ward of IG. He still hasn't skilled the heal. He's got his level 2. He's deciding if he wants to save it for the Grave or for the Wave. I think yep. you usually just go for the Wave. And yeah, that upside in the Courier, in fact, it, it wasn't 3 minutes, so the Courier wasn't flying yet. And it didn't have anything critical on it either. You can tell that IG is like okay with this. Though, because, okay, losing the Courier is obviously not okay, but they're okay with just OP being a bit shut down in the mid lane just by the, the positioning of Boboka. He wants to just make sure that his Nyx Assassin gets the levels, gets the farm, because the Nyx is the most important hero in this game for their, their type of lineup for now. Once he gets his levels up, it's going to be much easier for them to actually make any plays. Burning, Juggernaut pretty self-sufficient, but the trade-off is that Kezu, the Pit Lord, does get quite a lot in that offlane. Yeah. And then they just have to be able to fight when the time is right. But because the SF hasn't died as well, you're right. You've, you're getting enough out of the Nyx Assassin. You rotate around, and then the SF as well as the Juggernaut should be in fighting condition when Team Secret are ready to fight as well. Which makes for a very interesting clash coming up in probably five, ten minutes. Until then, there's rotations, it's pickoff. Puppy being the literal bounty hunter, going for the next one as well. Getting one bounty rune, going for the next bounty rune. When the bounties would are actually like introduced in some point, I thought this is what we'd be seeing a lot of the times. These is like bounty hunter just kind of running around grabbing them because he's just so easily he has such an easy time able to steal the opposition's bounty rune. Puts a very deep aggressive war too. So once he uh, OP does decide to go to the jungle, they'll be aware of that. Team Secret have another sentry? No, they don't. So they can't get rid of the sentry that's sitting in mid lane at the moment. No, OP has to walk back. Courier does respawn now. He's going to pick it up like that very safely. Use probably the shrine and just head back toward the mid lane. Uh, so Bobo shows himself. Puppy's looking for information more than anything else. Yeah. Slips over. They've got Pi smoked as well. They're looking like they're going, trying to go for an aggressive play, but there's no one in the posi no one in this position to die. And XXS is very durable currently at this point, with his almost level six finished up on this Nyx assassin. I suppose when Weaver shows himself in mid, you understand that the Nyx is is alone. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure that they're just happy with this. The next thing that they need to do is make sure that they're sitting behind OP as soon as mid one hits six, which is about to happen. Mid one getting pressured a lot by these raises though. OP standing his ground once he has his boots in his bottle. He keeps getting hit by them when he's flame guard down. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Now he only has two points in the flame guard too, so it's only 200 magic absorbed. So one raise just gets rid of that instantly. Oh, puppy leeching from the SF. Other advantage of that ward. I don't know if he's wondering what the hell's going on. Oh, here we go. The literal bounty hunter. <laughs> Takes the experience and will take the rune. That's actually so big for OP as well because he needed the bottle charges. So he can get back in, into the mid lane. And have more than just one raise. Yeah, just ferries himself out of clarity. Just content with just jungling and bottle crawling. But he is under a vision ward, so they know that they can... You know, they know exactly where he is. They can put some pressure onto the mid lane now. But Boca, sitting there, they do ping it out. You know, Pi wants to try to do something here, since he knows that the Weaver is sitting alone. They're bringing out Sentry and Awards now, so they do have the possibility to go for a gank onto the Weaver. Especially when Mid-1's got his three Spirits ready to roll. And that's, that's a lot of quick burst damage, but XXS is going to be the first one to come in with the next Assassin. And uh -oh. no nope. barrier. No Puppy point. sees it. It's too quick to deliver the dust. So Bobovka now has a dust for himself to go for those kills onto Puppy. XXS knows that there's a Sentry Ward mid since they got dewarded, so he can't really go for this aggressive play onto Mid-1. Unless Mid-1 goes a little bit too high onto the high ground. Mid-1. No defensive spirit up either. Oh, he goes He's all about the it. attack and, uh, okay, well, stuns well off target. Yeah, I tried to just do it out of the Vendetta. Knows he can't go for the Vendetta hit there. Nice little attempt there, but just off the mark. So Puppy's still waiting for this Kuru to come back. And he's now going to finally get his wish, is bringing out the gloves. Radiance top tower. So if he can oh, just, man. if he can just wait, is he gonna get it again? If, if he oh. can just wait a little longer, oh, he, oh, he left. No, he just he moves left. away. Just a little bit too early. But they want to go for the kill here. Yeah, mid one six. Pies in position. Searing chains up. Tell he's grab pick up. Mid one still not coming in the spirits until now. The jump forward into one last slash. Be careful with that weaver bug on top of him. The armor is going to be dripping away from him. But pile I die. They bolt off cooldown in one second time. Top lane, XXS getting pressured by MP, gets out, but burning goes and gets a solo kill with his Omni Slash on the river. 
ward and sentry ward as you should do versus bounty hunter. I was mentioning in the last game how you should do this versus a majority of invis heroes. IG is well aware of that. They do that and net themselves a kill. So burnings, burnings kind of filled rotation into the mid with the TP to try to help out his shadow fiend. Does net him a kill in the river onto the bounty hunter. So at least there's that chance for him. Actually pushing OP down the bottom lane now. So this is their way of either protecting the SF, maybe just one of those those quick souls which are available at the tower. Yeah, I think he just had a you know, quick wave on the tower. Leave the lane back to burning and uh, OP will farm as he goes through the through the jungle and back to the mid. First and fast gank should be happening in quite a moment, Puppy. Looking for the play, and this is like the perfect situation to go for Shadowfiend too, because Shadowfiend has nothing that he can do versus Lifestealer and Bounty Hunter if he gets grabbed. And they do have vision of him from that aggressive Gaia's ward that Puppy did place out. Puppy is aware, since he died before in the river right over there, he's trying to avoid that ward, the Ops Ward and Sentry Ward. So he does try to wrap around it. Yeah, just look bottom at the bottom lane, Yep, someone's going to be on him. He needs a quick hit, something to actually control. Or any kind of damage. With that damage, they can get a pick off easily onto Q. I say easily, if they can take into account the Shallow Grave, but Puppy's got a Shuriken Toss, which should give a bit of an interruption. Yeah, it wasn't enough. MP is a little bit late on that secondary attack, so he stays on the back of Q, and mid one will arrive. He's through and already triggered. But Invictus Gaming are out. Happy to sacrifice the Dazzle for the for their rotation of uh, both cores of Secret. Space for OP. He's not got his Akilla finished up. As you mentioned, the gloves were delivered earlier. Akilla is, yeah, Akilla and more clarity. So he's just content with farming the jungle, it seems, for quite a while. You know, he needs to get his his HP pool up in order to be able to deal with those type of Ember Spirit triple remnant committing commitments. So back to the farm game. Yep. This is good for mid one as well. Doing these early rotations, just kind of moving around, freeing up the mid lane so Puppy can get his six for the track. Very important for their type of lineup. OP. Filling up the bottle. Oh, he failed. They actually messed it up. Q ported maybe for, I think he ported from outside of the fountain, so he doesn't actually fill up OP's bottle there. See, that, that, the effect just wore off a little bit too early. Cause yeah. he, he TP'd in and uh, it took just a fraction of a second for us to actually give him the bottle. Oh, okay. Because he, he moved down to farm the camp instead. Dyer's top tower is under Armed attack. Armed out for Lifestealer, Buckler out for Kezu. He's already nearing that mechanism timing that we want. Very slow early game. Yeah. Just a nice little passive start. Everyone wants to have their major items up before they go for any kind of initiation. MP's going to feel fairly confident himself now he's got the armlet done, but obviously looking for that nice little power spike of himself once he has the Desolator and whatever else he chooses to go after that point, if it will be Echo or not. Yeah, hard to, for either team to really pressure the safe laners. The MP has got Rage to survive pretty much any gank, and Burning has been to counteract any type of aggressive maneuver they go. So okay. everything else just says, like, we'll wait until we're powerful enough that we can just get the better fight. And in the meantime, you do these two, three man ganks. With the cover of smoke, they can slip underneath that Observer Ward. And Poppy's already doing the scouting. There you go. Secret just trying to go for kills, because their heroes don't really hit buildings that well. So just getting kills is pretty much their leeway into getting any type of objective. XXS position in the bottom lane. Not aware that Secret's going for this maneuver here. OP. Looks like he's going to get grabbed up here. Q is in position. It's a nice time to have that Veil already up and running. So they run a Spirit out of defensive one. Realizing a lot of TP supports on the way. The pit down. So Q held in position for a moment. Puppy as well as Pilei die having real issues because the double stun in from the Nyx Assassin. Keizu wants to try and pull Pilei out in time and it will not be in time. Mainly because Pilei is already dead. So both supports will die. The ulti from the Underlord was triggered. Great reaction from IG. Instant TPs coming out as soon as they go for that dive onto the tower. But yeah, that's, this is what Secret needs to do to try to force these towers. They need to get the kills. No, they don't really have any natural building hitters. It's you know, the life stealer. The only way that they can do that later on is once Kezu has his mech up and they can just kind of go for that mid one. big unit up at mid one with his Arcane Rune, commits his spirit, but everyone on IG backs up, resets. Yeah, and he already used the slider fist, so even if there was someone running back, he couldn't reach them. I think mid one was trying to delay them up a little bit, but missed his combination with the slight and, and chains. Yeah, oh, he's gonna have his dragon lens finished up at a very good timing. So even though they put a good amount of pressure on him and even killed his career early on, he is completely caught up. So this is how life still wants to gank. Bring in his Dark Troll Summoner. So hold him, pop out, do all the damage you possibly can. With the Spirit Jump in, the damage is more than enough. A nice pick up from Pilei Dai, throwing back the Nyx Assassin, gets the extra little stun over onto Q. And with a Spirit Jump forward, Q, he's a self-grave up. 
Running away back from the tower of one perch tree, making life a lot more difficult for mid one. Can't keep that uh, that flame guard up and running. And now it's MP who's also in very, very deep open wounds. He's been trying to fight up against the Nyx Assassin underneath this, underneath the tier two tower while Burning had Omni Slash available. That was optimistic to say the least that he would survive that. It was looking very good for Secret there for that dive and then. MP going a bit too aggressive, going for the Nyx Assassin kill as well. Burning ends up getting a big bounty onto the Lifestealer. I like what Burning's doing too with the Dominator. He had it just sitting on top of Opie with uh, the Seder Banisher, so he can always purge mid one. It's difficult for Ember to get that wonderful immolation. Nice little pit, they pick up the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut starts his spin, tries to run away a little bit faster, able to do so. Back to the other side of the river. The advantage of having a hero like a Dazzle behind. Puppy going for the Dominators again, because it seems like Puppy goes for it on every single hero that he plays. Just really likes the way the item, what the item has become. I would have to agree with him too. It seems just to be one of the more powerful items. Is his way now. of playing Chen without actually having to play Chen? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's incredibly good. If you have no one else who is going to be picking it up on your team, you should have one person definitely getting every, definitely getting a Dominator every single game, just because of the aura trait. benefit that it gives you. Go for my master. Alright, so at this point of the game, 14 minutes in. A couple of quick skirmishes, but still no tier 1 towers being threatened. Everyone's just happy to keep the farm going. Are you feeling like this is in favor of Invictus Gaming as far as timing goes with items? Yeah, I would think so. There's, they have a much better uh, like attempt at taking towers down, even though Secret does have the Abyssal Underlord, which we've seen how powerful it can be in those five-man type of group ups. IG actually has heroes that can hit buildings. They have Healing Ward and Dazzle for the sustain as well to kind of deal with that. So I think the after this early game, it's IG coming out just a bit ahead. Let's see if they can actually push that advantage a little bit harder. And yes. success in position for bottom lane. It's only two heroes from the side of Secret, so they should be. They have to be a little bit careful. Obviously, he doesn't, have, he doesn't have Vendetta up, so he can't just walk into mid one just yet. And mid one, Spike Carapace. Well, there's going to be a return stun actually hitting the Underlord through the tree line. Keizu lining up for the double stun. That's mid one, and he leaves his defensive spirit behind, so he can go in deeper. Nyx Assassin has Spike Carapace back off Radiant cooldown, so it's not the easiest kill in the wall for an Ember Spirit. Extra TPs are Radiant coming now. Keizu realizing something's awry. This is a big tower for Secret to get though. They don't really have natural building pushers as I mentioned before. And Keizu's trying to get it into deny range it seems and then get the hell out. So it looks like that should be a free deny for IG but MP coming into position here with the life sealer. But both uh, trying to get the deny but... You thought they were pulling out. They came straight back in again. Shikuchi is off cooldown one second. MP's gonna find him and see the run up. Sentry Ward is down so Puppy able to hit the track. Doesn't have another Sakuchi, should be able to catch up to him with the, with the movement speed. So track kill going for them. But at the same time, they did force a lot of reaction to go try to make sure that they do get that tower and they do claim themselves mid. So Kezu does Dark Rift back to the base, but with that Ember Spirit having a remnant down, he's able to come back to the fray instantly. And get themselves a tower and a track kill. They're losing the tower themselves. It's kind of an even trade off in a way. In a way. A team Secret wait for the next timing. Or oh, maybe they actually won't get the time to. OP with an Alpha Wolf on top. Yeah, Burning doesn't even, he's not even using the creep for himself. He's just enabling his Shadow Fiend. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Nyx Assassin going for the Midas. XSX does this every game on, I think Dyer's on every single offlaner he plays. Gets his one core item that he needs and goes for the back for the Midas to make sure that he stays irrelevant for us into the later stages of the game. Since he is the biggest ganker and they're only disable. Mid lane looks like they want to go for a contestion. Not wanting to drop these tier ones versus secrets. Not be careful, lineup. but if Puppy gets caught out with the dust being triggered, so Bounty Hunter revealed at the start with the slide of fist, the roof, the spirit jumps forward. That brings the life stealer in as well. Dazzle dead very quickly. Nyx will join him. OP lets the ulti rip, but the damage output is minimal. And the negation of damage, secret are already done. And Puppy is very durable with this Dominator build. Unable to bring him down quick enough, especially with the raindrop too, to block a lot of that magic damage. And Pilot Dice stealing the healing ward from earlier is now going to give them their window Radiant's to push this tower. tower. So, wonder if they even stop here with the catapult Radiant's and the healing ward. You can attack into the tier two tower. Great movements coming out from Secret. Giving themselves some track Radiant's kills, thwarting IG's aggression. What's he got this time? Spin, spin. Yeah. That's a good kill. 
no real way to stop any spin TP. They do have a lot of physical damage. But... Yeah, safety for supports, a little bit of extra damage if he if he does get in trouble. And with the the damage at the tier two tower, it's not too shabby. But you can see Team Secret turning their attention shortly to the top lane where mid one's already pushing into the tier one tower. Ooh. Oh, maybe they just go down after oh, OP. That's a little. That's a clever little play that you can go for with the Dark Rift too onto the Dominated Creep. He's trying to dom Dark Rift like three or four heroes onto it while they go for a Centaur stomp. And now Puppy gets reinfested by MP, who has the Desolator now finished up, so he has a massive amount of physical damage burst potential. You know there's something wrong when Nyx Assassin just sees Live Silla infest air, because that's all he saw. <laughs> So he pings out saying, I'm fairly certain someone else is here. Oh, but Q two. puts the sentry oh, down. Oh, they can see him. Puppy starts the attack. The Sentinel's coming over. The Omni Slash isolates both of the heroes. The neutral creep actually gets MP. Okay. Well, Wait. <laughs> okay. The splash damage from the Black Dragon actually ends up bringing him down. Oh, that's, that's going to be so painful for IG. All you get really out of that then is a support and a little bit of money lost on the life sealer. That would have been a big swing into their favor, but instead it's only 400 or 800 swing since the 400, 400 change up. Oh, IG ready though with that, with their sentries Q in a very good position, always having those, that reveal on him, just emphasizing that heavily, not getting any items for himself, just, you can tell he's already just like, okay, I am the ob sentry guy, that's me, that's all I do. It's actually kind of funny that like Puppy would be willing to hang around the shrine like 20 minutes in, you'd expect like more wards to be there and I'll just wait for your attack. Because they probably could have popped the Dazzle really quickly. And then just moved on to Burning. Burning with a nice Omni Splash. Omni Slash on top of it. Just brings them both down very quickly. He's now got his Manta style finished up, so... They don't Good really dash. have any great lockdown to deal with the Juggernaut either on the side of Secret. They just basically have a lift and try to burst him down. They have Pit, of course, but... You know, you have Spinto, he's able to get out of that one. It's like it's like Team Seeker just waiting until mid one hits level 25. It's like, okay, now we have the lockdown we need for the team. <laughs> we'll take a little bit longer. But both teams are very happy to, to keep the status quo. Keep the farm going. Burning's even looking for a little bit more push into Maelstrom. Uh, with probably Mjolnir shortly after. Yeah, I like Baboka's build as well. He's doing the, I mean, it's, it's a standard build that we've been seeing now in the Weaver, but the Medallion into the Agonims. It's very important to have this Medallion for his Shadow Fiend since they're since the Desolator was finished up on the Life Sealer, so once OP now has the BKB coming out very shortly, he's going to be pretty tough to actually bring down with the Weave as well as all the magic resistance he's going to get. Top lane, the Sentry Ward, just about to expire, actually saves mid one's life. Yeah, plays it perfectly, jumps out, now goes back in again, knowing Spike Carapace is down as well as Vendetta. They can go on the Nyx Assassin, Puppy gave all the extra vision, oh, the Spike Carapace returns the damage from the Shuriken Toss, it won't save his life. It'll be a three-man track kill instead. Ouch, his Midas was up too. Poor XXS. That's, that's painful. So money flowing in again for Team Seeker. But the top two net worths belong to Invictus Gaming. Team Seeker only barely holding the, the gold advantage, but the experience belongs to IG. For 21 minutes in, that, that advantage is only being 1-2k. Rather negligible. Yeah, very close early game. Coming up for both teams burning. Does have a TP spin. Team's gonna be just fine to get out of there. Does claim himself the tower as well, so nice little split push coming out from him. MP now with his Desolator coming out. He is going to put some siege onto the top flower, but OP porting in instantly with the weave on top. Stops the new aggression coming out from Secret. Yeah, MP's gonna lose all that armor for Live Sealer. No longer that tanky frontliner that Team Secret look him to look for him to be. Yeah, I like that OP's gonna go for the butterfly next too. Going for that evasion versus the Life Stealer. Just being able to peel off of him as well. Is it worth actually finishing the entire thing or just getting the talisman, and then getting something more like uh, like the hurricane pike? I think getting the I think like the butterfly Scotty build is really good now that people have been doing. We saw it yesterday as well. Really like the way that builds up. Right, does IG know? Radiance bottom tower. You don't seem to be aware of this one. It's going to be dropped really quickly with that medallion picked up from Puppy as well as the Deso. Easy slipping. Bottom lane mid one is uh, being prowled on by bugs. So a decent amount of damage being done to him, but the big plan for Team Secret still works. So the Aegis the Immortal into the hands of MP. A lot more security now for the, for the push to come. Yeah, this, this is like one of those, you know, you call it the farming Aegis. You know, you get this Aegis just like, okay, it's not really like we can do too much to force any like type of big play, big siege or anything with it, but we can 
feel safe that we can farm for a couple more minutes and acquire the items that we want to take this game into the later stages. It might be enough that would at least stop IG from defending that tier 1 tower on top. Yeah, maybe the tier 1. Yeah. Oh, Searing Chains jump in, Spy Carapace burning it here, Omni Slash, all of it's on mid one. He was not expecting that many friends of IG to be on bottom lane. Great position in coming out from burning this game. I think all of his Omni Slashes have actually been perfectly successful, getting netting himself multiple kills. 4 0 3 on burning involved in the majority of the kills that they have, and 160, kill, 160 creep kills on top to boot. So he's having a great game. As you see, as for him, only topped by that of the SF, who did buy out the Talisman already. But Bulk almost finishing up that Aghanims as well. So they do have a lot of bursts coming out from the Ember Spirit on Secret, which will be pretty much counteracted by that Aghanims when he does have it for the time lapse. So you miss out on your burst damage. Your pushing of buildings is okay, but kind of relies on you still finding kills. I'm worried Team Secret are actually falling behind a little bit too quickly now. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Even though they have the, they do have the Crimson Guard and the Atrophy Aura with the Underlord, but they're not really able to make Kazu's hero look like the, you know, the commanding Abyssal Underlord that we yep. saw yes from yesterday's performance. Especially when you're running the other negative armors coming in from IG. Yeah. And the damage output of Juggernaut is is starting to rise and rise very quickly. Yeah, he's going for the... I mean, this is kind of the standard build that we were seeing at ESL and everything, too. Just a Dominator Manta Maelstrom build, so he has a mixed damage potential. You're not all in on physical versus Atrophy Aura. Mm -hmm. And then how do you even push with Team Secret up against the Nyx Assassin who's borrowed? He's not quite at the Aghanims yet, but yeah, he's getting yeah. it. He's getting pretty close. He's already pretty much three quarters of the way there. Yeah. It will be very hard for them to... They just have to get kills in order to go for the sieging. Pilot I couldn't keep the vision up, so Nyx Assassin just walks away. And Burning slips down the bottom lane, so he'll go for the push to the tier 2 tower. So for some level of reaction from Team Seeker, probably more than Puppy. And actually there is more than Puppy down here as the Life Stealer infested inside. And, and then they TP rip. in on top of the Alpha Wolf. So Q, first target kill before it can even get a Shallow Grave off. But Burning realizes what's happening. TP's out quickly under the cover of Spin. So heavy rotations, a lot of ultimates still being committed by Team Secret, and they only get the support. Thank God that they have a bounty hunter is probably what they're thinking. <laughs> they're like, nice, track money at least. It's good money. It's the second level of bounty too. Yeah. Finishes up his Solar Crest now too on Puppy. The standard, the standard Puppy items, the Dominator Solar Crest, just helping your team out. Pilot Eye even finishing up the Blink Dagger, so he's fairly farmed as well. So it's just really... Yeah, the Dazzle is pretty much the only actual five you could say in this game. The man who's got 1.7k, 1.8k net worth. Yeah. Compared to the 4.5 of the Rubik. Very even game though so far. 26 minutes and it's a zero net worth lead for anybody. Experience fairly insignificant as well. Only 3,000 going towards the favor of IG. Another infest coming out onto Puppy. They want to keep rolling with the punches. They can keep finding these openings. They keep creating a little bit more space. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a gem come out soon for an IG. Once that Aegis kicks out. Well, it makes sense. You look how many wards are down for Team Secret at the moment. Like, they've got four observers down, and I think that's actually five sentries currently planted on the field. A lot of vision committed into this into this period of the game. And maybe this is now what Puppy is, is having to resort to. Wait for someone to TP back to a shrine or come to a shrine injured to be healed. Burning setting his own TP, but he's going all the way back to base, and there is, again, no stun that will pierce that immunity. Not until Livesail looks to get a basher. Q, all right, there's the pick. Oh, poor Q. I am really feeling for him right now. Zero, six, and six, it's, it, he's just getting, you know, caught on the transitions. He's like, all right, I have to try to follow my team around, but every time I do this, I just get picked off, guys. Please stop running away from me. I need friends, they keep them close. And Team Secret, like, you have to make the most Radiant out of these very small opportunities. A blink attack. forward by Pilot Eye, grabs the Weaver, throws him in river. There is still that time that's available, able to use it, not a secondary controller from Team Secret, so he's out. But this damage, now able to be inflicted into a tier 2 tower just because of the support hero kill. Yeah, splitting them up is very important. Secret having the potential to do that is very good too with the Ember Spirit. Boots to travel, he's always able to push the lanes out and then join the fray. 
So whenever they get these pickoffs, is exactly what they need to do to pressure towers. With that life sealer desolator, they actually have a natural building hitter now. They do spot burning on the rotation toward top. Mid one, looking to be the aggressor here with the infested life sealer. Yeah, now Does Burning that? can scan him out. Invictus Gaming Observer Ward sees him absolutely clearly. Yeah. So Burning, like it. Unless he feels. Yeah, okay, well, I suppose he can still spin and TP out of the top lane. A golden thread. Yeah, he should be okay. MP is going for the. Uh, since he saw the Shadow Fiend going for the Butterfly next, he's going for MKB rather than going for that Basher. Yeah. He can still potentially have the mini ba Bash chance. But not when he's spinning, though. Not when he's spinning. Well, mid one. There's got a lot of friends still around here, so burning. Holding that tier one tower. And Invictus Gaming actually committed quite heavily to make sure that Team Secret do not push this lane out. Wondering how long it's going to take for Puppy to realize there's also an Observer Ward watching their maneuver. Yeah, that ward is actually pretty clutch right now from IG, watching multiple, multiple rotations coming out last couple of minutes or so. Which is why this smoke from Team Secret could catch Invictus Gaming out. They smoke Radiance up, they loop around, they're looking for IG, attack. but IG have five heroes still pushing out the top lane, but they're losing their mid. No one defending this is warning bells for Secret. Another tier two grabbed up from Secret, nice and free. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Yeah, IG even used a scan on the high ground there, so they know that Secret was in position to back anyone up. Yeah. And Burning just trying to siege by himself, going for that Scotty build as well. And OP does finish the butterfly. And looks like he might be going for either a casual Morbid Mask Nest or maybe finishing up toward a Satanic. I think I would like him to do like the Morbid Mask into Scotty. I think the Scotty's very good this game. Maybe he wants to go for some more like minus armor, plus armor, but we'll see what he decides in the next couple minutes. You're looking for that kite, considering Team Secret are running four melees. Yeah. Scotty does make a lot of sense. Or maybe just going for just like sheer damage potential soon after the Mask of Death since they're playing versus Atrophy or and versus Crimson Guard. He yeah. wants to be able to do something in the fights. If he does get the Satanic, however, like that's that's one of those items that combining it up with the Aghanim Scepter over on the Dyer's Weaver, it should make the SF cast. immortal. Yeah, in theory. In theory. If the timing is right, if they play it right. Oh. The ward that they do have near the Ancients from Secret, it's only going to be timing out soon, actually catches the tail end of the smoke from IG. They even use a scan on top of it to make sure that they know where IG wants to make the move. But IG, naturally, with this with this smoke, la thankfully have Burning pushing in the top lane, so they should be able to net themselves a Tier 2 at least out of this one. Mm -hmm. Radiance and Team Secret in no position to defend it. They're all the, all way, they're already back at their base, all moving down to the bottom lane. So they're going to fight the backdoor regeneration. Which, hilariously enough, they can do. We've also been triggered, Highlight Eye. There's very little they can do about this, because if they engage in now, Team Seek will be fighting up against really high armor targets of IG. But they are on their way. Dyer's top tower is under attack. They can wait a little bit longer. Tier 2 tower has already dropped. XXS is burrowed too, so it's very hard for them to actually get into IG's lineup right now. <laughs> they triggered the dust. They expected Weaver to just slip in behind them. Yeah, Puppy actually picking up a gem first. I thought there was going to be IG that were the ones to grab it, but Puppy's the one to grab it first off. Feeling like they... I think that one war that they have in the, <laughs> in the dire jungle is the one that he's like, it seems like they always know where we're going. I have to get a gem here. So, gem will be good for at least as well to I'll pick off the Nyx Assassin and the Weaver and just scout their movements. Well, Observer sentry down. That's why they see the Nyx Assassin. Quick spy Carapus. But it won't stop MP from attacking through that rage. And then they keep the tracks going. Over to Bobica. Imba strength. Now that quick move and thanks to Shikuchi. The tier one, finally! <laughs> they get it with a nice backstab. Yeah, the gem, this gem pickup's gonna be very big for Puppy. Being able to scout out the movements from the Nyx is gonna be quite huge for them. I can see so much, and if they look over in a second, 20 seconds it will be until Roshan's up. Neither team really wanted to take an engagement. This BKB that he picked up, I think it was 12 minutes ago or so, maybe even longer than that, has been unused. 12, 12, 10 seconds still on it. There we go, now they pick up the gem. Cool. I was gonna say, I don't think Q's gonna be getting his arcane boots this game. So he does go for the gem for himself. Weave up onto Opie. Yeah, they try and kill him off before they can have any kind of real effect. BKP triggered. Little bit preemptive by Opie. Not, ex not really, maybe not expecting his teammate to time lapse him that early, but... First BKB usage. That's that communication we we're also looking for as well, right? Like between the Weaver as well as the SF to make this combination work together. Burning's very farmed right now though. 17,500 17, net worth. I, Scotty, finished up. 
not only deals an immense amount of damage, but also incredible survivability. See how they want to approach the next couple fights. Does he have a dominated creep right now? I don't believe he does. Well, I've seen nearby, but I can see an alpha wolf they can take. Yeah, middle of the fight, you can grab that. They still don't have that MKB on the live steals. There's still a direct attack into the Shadow Fiend. A concern for Team Secret. But the easier thing, slip over to Roshan while IG is defending. The bottom lane is pushing in quite nicely, so is the mid. So Team Secret do have quite considerable space to maneuver on the map. Yeah, mid one's been doing a really good job at keeping the lanes forced in. So they have to always have to react from the side of IG. So now they're doing that themselves a free Rosh. He's just going on the side of MP. And he should have his MKB finished up in the next few moments. Yeah, 300 gold. That's all he needs. In the meantime, Team Secret, there's only one remaining out of town they have to take out. So keeping pressure on this top tier 2, keeping IG defensive on the top tier 2. Makes a lot of sense. Chip away at it slowly. You can pick up the Juggernaut and throw him around, but you're not going to fight in. You've got two of your own heroes weaved up at the moment. Plus, burning, gaining armor quickly. So yeah, Team Secret don't need to force it. They, they do this instead. Mid one. Keeps the split push going. Push in the mid. Push in the bottom. And force IG to back off that top tower. There we go. MKB finished up for MP. Poppy can see him. He knows the Nyx is in there. With the gem of true sight, that bar doesn't really help him as much. So a pick up from Highlight Eye, they grab up burning, and Keizu commits as much damage as possible. You do have that time lapse already being used on the Nyx Assassin. And SF winds up the ulti, MP's in close. They push him up with the Omni Slash burning. Does so much work. Keizu trying to TP him back out again if he can get close to MP. No, he doesn't. He gets stunned and kept away. MP will drop Team Secret. Lose three plus an extra. Thanks to the Aegis. Feeling like they can go for that Nyx Assassin kill, but Boboka says, nope, Aghanim's Weaver. Time lapses the Nyx Assassin all the way to full HP, and then it, the fight becomes very difficult when Rage goes off cooldown. When, when Rage is on cooldown for MP, they're able to bring him down with a nice, massive lined up stun from the Nyx Assassin from XXS, and the Weave building up throughout the fight. Just very difficult to fight into IG's lineup in those type of situations when the Nyx is burrowed. But Team Secret, I, maybe this is also just revealing a little bit of pressure they feel. The fact that we ha they have to take out that tier 2 tower, they have to move over towards the shrines. Yeah. Like, you're on the clock right now as Team Secret, knowing that burning is getting out of control. The fact that OP is is just progressing without any kind of real delay in his items. Yeah, Juggernaut and Shadow Fiend with the Dazzle on top, they do very, they fare very well versus Lifestealer, and even versus Ember Spirit, because they have so much sustain coming up from the Dazzle and from the time lapse. And Healing Ward on top, too. They don't really have a great hero that can actually get in to kill the healing ward either. So if he puts it down in a good position, it's like, okay, who's really going to run in and hit it? You kind of have to like waste a decent amount of time to do that unless the Rubik's able to single it out. This is IG's Achilles heal at the moment. They are really still committing heroes to ensure that tier 2 tower remains alive. And this gives Ember, Ember Spirit some pressure points for IG. So he can just TP back again and just in, well, in 18 seconds, push the lane back out. So I like every every 30, every 40 seconds, they have to keep looking back towards the top lane. Yeah. I like what mid one's going for here, too. Since he went for the blink and the veil, he's going for a little bit of an unorthodox orchid, but he understands how important this weaver and how important this dazzle is in the position. So if he's able to pierce into the back line and get the orchid, get the silence off, he can prevent the time lapse, prevent the grave. It's going to be very important for the next couple of uh, engagements. Is that when weaver try, if he does see this coming, you go for like a Lincoln Sphere? Yeah, absolutely. Lincoln's Lotus Orb, anything like that. I think probably, I think maybe the Lotus Sword might be a little bit better this one just because he can remove a couple different things too. Remove the chains, remove the track, remove open wounds. A lot of good things to come from it. Burning's completed up here's next item, so the full Mjolnir's up. Satanic coming out very soon as well for OP. So they're peeling a little bit ahead in the net worth now. Actually, no, they're not. Okay, it's, but they're peeling it, you know, they're bringing it back from the 6,000 deficit that they were at. It feels like they have more effective net worth. Yeah, that's, that's how, exactly how I felt too. Just because the Dazzle's so, you know, crippled on his net worth, and the Rubik and the Bounty Hunter have so much, but... Yeah, the other four are just doing so much work for yeah. IG, and, and it's all to the critical items you want, too. Like, you got your Blink Dagger Agnum, Scepter over on the Nyx, that's everything he kind of wants for the fight at the moment. Satanic, BKP, Butterfly, Lance on an SF. 
Yeah, like and he, he looks like an absolute monster. It's really like hard for Seeker to really approach these fights too. Like now with the gem finished up on uh, XXS bought from Q, they were able to deward any type of vision. So all they need, to, all the way IG approached this fight, it's like okay, Nick Assassin's burrowed here. Weaver sits even further back with the dazzle, and then it's like okay, who, who do you really want to go? And you can't actually make a clean initiation on anybody because of the multiple si di different save potentials that they have. And now it's IG going on the aggressive, going for this tier two. Yeah. Meanwhile, mid one knocking on the do on the door on the bottom lane. So IG, even if they do bring down this tier two town, they may not feel obliged to go any further. Both teams are in the position where on their off lane they have their tier two tower remaining. Paladai with Blink and Four Star. You get the rooting over on the Nick's Assassin. Puppy still doesn't want to go in on this. Kazu is just completely oomed instantly. Two mana burns and he just has to walk back, use his arcane boots. Radiant's bottom tower is under Hard life for an underlord. Hard life for secret. They're just, they're kind of like, oh, man, what do we do? They're, they seem like they're a bit confused at how they want to approach this game. It's just like, okay, mid one, just keep doing your split push thing and maybe we can catch a couple heroes off guard. But IG always staying at this kind of unit, but both always sitting behind the Shadow Fiend, burning just being this heavy frontliner. Not really afraid of anything coming toward his way, and here we go. Smoke yeah. coming out from IG. It has to be a game of patience, right? From Team yeah. Secret. So you do, you just hold back. So if IG's always grouping up as a unit, and you're able to have the power through the split push from uh, from the power of Ember Spirit, and also the global potential that Underlord brings, you just win one good fight, and you could punish heavily. But they need to have that one good fight. They want to be getting a little bit more scrappy fights going on too, because they have the bounty hunter. You know, they have the track. They want to be getting those little little trade kills, but IG just not giving them that type of potential. Here we go, another tier two going down, and then we'll see the shrines be pressured from IG. Roche should be spawning within the next few moments. That we'll be finding out in the next two minutes. So it's the same kind of uh, thing on top lane, however, mid one. We'll take care of this creep creepway pretty quickly. MPs rotating over, IG in the neighborhood, but IG they're coming up. They they're going way for the harder. tier three tower. The amount of damage the burning does with no fortification, Team Secret, they're not keeping their racks alive, they're finally coming back, burning picked up and thrown in close up, down a half life, it's a Rax. It is, the Rax is gone, the Nyx Assassin rooted and controlled inside the dire base, OP will create a little bit of space posturing forward, but then again, maybe not so posturing by space creation, he's looking for the Rax, moves his attention towards MP, burning has that omni touch with the creep wave, being dead does cause a couple of problems with that, but they take out the rags and now willing to back up. Highlight Eye, can he get a pick up? Yeah, he can. Nick Assassin picked up, dragged back into the pit of malice. Also caught out OP just on the edge of it. So MP runs forward. He wants Nick Assassin dead, oh but with the God. Omni Slash, the damage is huge. The puppy takes a lot of it, but they're still alive. But the vision is there. Puppy drops down low. The Slat of Fist Q is at least low on life as well. But the Shallow Graves still available as well. So they even if IG anyone. do drop low, they just regenerate. XXS was dropped. I think the, the lightning interaction with Burrow is probably one of the funniest things. In the you just see this lightning Burrow. Like, it's really good. But yeah, again, the time lapse is just showing it the power. XXS drops to about half health, instantly brought up back to full, and then the weave starts building up, and that's when Secret can't really fight into it. They don't have anything to deal with this Juggernaut, don't have anything really to deal with the Shadow Fiend either. And the IG push potential is way stronger than Secret. So those type of trades where they see mid one going for that top tower, they're like, okay, it's an Ember Spirit knocking at our door. Mm -hmm. We've got a Juggernaut and a Shadow Fiend, let's go. All right, so Game of Patience won't work. Somehow they need to try to bring the frights, but I need to try and find one unit. The Infus is there, they see the Nyx Assassin, a quick pop, also saw the Weaver with the slider fits into the tree line. Pilot Eye jumps in, gets the pick up, but there's a lot of support right behind with a quick raise. Pilot Eye as well as mid one. Mid one down for 85 seconds, also lost that gem. He recovered it from the last fight. But IG, they're here for kills. Pilot Eye able to get the blink just in time. Up onto the hill, even if he does get perched when he, re when he gets there. Every time IG is just ready for this with the with the dazzle with the uh, time lapse as well. They both actually used it at the same exact time, so Grave was expended, but there was a literally the one he was setting at, sitting at like four percent HP. He almost dropped down, but it was perfect timing from the time lapse on the grave. Now with that buyback by mid one, it really slows down the Octarine. So he was actually stopping at the Orchid yeah. and was looking to go into the Octarine, but now it's going to take even longer. Yeah, you can see what he wanted to do with the Orchid, but it's the IG is just not giving them the option to do that with these frontliners that they have. The Juggernaut kind of just runs in. The, you can see how 
how uh, like aggressive XXX is playing too. He was playing up on the high ground of the enemy team, and look how fast this roast drops. One, two, three, four, five, dead. And Aegis Cheese now coming out for IG. And Burning will hold on to both of them. Kezu. And they find a bigger target. Kezu caught out. Pilot I will jump in through the back line. They'll find the weaver with the shallow grave. It's there from the dazzle. He was far enough away. He'll keep them alive, and then it's IG. They go through two. No buybacks on both of them. Omni Slash is going to work by the Rubik, and then Pilot High jumps up onto the hill. But you know what IG are here for. Objective-based gaming, run down the mid, and go for the second lane of Rax. Too much sustain coming out from IG. Ooh. Okay, oh. Amber. Oh, mid one. Okay, Amber. <laughs> he went on the back lines, then spirited forward, or backwards, you could say, to the forward line of IG. Oh my lord. IG's five man potential and objective taking potential is just way stronger than Seek at this point. There's nothing they can do to defend these, bar these barracks. Yeah, and the weaves on them, the armor is ticking up. Mid one actually gets bashed as well. Mid one so low. That hit from OP will do the work. 100 seconds on the sideline. That's the game. Yeah, GG is called by Team Secret. And Victus Gaming will push through with one hell. Actually, I don't even say one hell, two hell, of course. The Juggernaut and the SF were massive. The whole team just worked. Yep. Uh, I Secret not really having the best type of objective takers and tower pushers, and IG just defending that tier two top was probably the most crucial thing for them, getting that big turnaround after the Aegis goes, after they kill the Aegis. Just great positioning from the supports coming after them. I would definitely give them the MVPs as well as Burning. Burning had pretty much all of his rotations clean and crisp, all of his Omni Slash as well. 6 0 and 10 for the. Juggernaut, but yeah, the Weaver time lapse you see. We've been talking about the Agonim's Weaver potential, mm -hmm. and you saw it come to fruition in this game. Yeah, that was that third pickup, potentially stealing it from Team Secret to pick, and they steal the game from them as well. And we see our second team of the day eliminated from a Dota Pit. Of course, we'll be back as we'll have the winners of both of our law bracket matches facing up against each other after the break.